Our culture today is obsessively focused on unrealistically positive expectations. Be happier, be healthier, be the best, better than the rest. Be smarter, faster, richer, sexier, more popular, more productive, more envied, and more admired. Be perfect and amazing and crap out 12 karat gold nuggets before breakfast each morning while kissing your selfie-ready spouse and two and a half kids goodbye. Then fly your helicopter to your wonderfully fulfilling job where you spend your days doing incredibly meaningful work that's likely to save the planet one day. Mark Manson. Story Shots is proud to bring you this free audiobook summary. Do you want to get access to more free audiobook summaries like this? Subscribe and click the bell button now to get notified each time we upload a new summary. You can also download our free app and enjoy thousands of other summaries of best selling nonfiction books that are available in text, audio, and animated formats. Story Shots has been featured by Apple, Google, and The Guardian as one of the world's best reading and learning apps. Go to GetStoryShots.com and download the app today. Happy learning! Story Shots Summary of the Subtle Art of Not Giving a f The Counterintuitive Approach to Living a Good Life by Mark Manson About Mark Manson Mark Manson is an American self-help author and blogger. He started his first blog on dating advice in 2008. It became hugely popular and gained hundreds of thousands of readers. In 2009, Manson decided to travel the world for the next seven years while working remotely. He ended up visiting more than 65 countries. In 2010, he started a new blog called Post Masculine, which provided general life advice for men. On this blog, he posted an article under the same name as this book. The article was so well received, he decided to turn it into a book. The subtle art of not giving a f went on to become a New York Times bestseller. Manson has been featured on NBC, CNN, Fox News, the BBC, and Time Magazine. In October 2018, Penguin Random House announced that Manson would work with Will Smith to write the actor's autobiography. Manson's work has been translated into more than 60 languages. Introduction The subtle art of not giving a f is designed to help clarify what you choose to find important in your life. Essentially, what you choose to give a f about. We often don't realize how frequently we're giving a f about something that doesn't matter. Manson aims to help you spot when you are placing too much importance on self-help ideas and how to start giving a f about the most important things. The book has sold over 13 million copies. According to Amazon, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a f was the most read nonfiction book in 2017. Chapter 1. Don't Try our culture today is obsessively focused on unrealistically positive expectations. Be happier, be healthier, be the best, better than the rest. Be smarter, faster, richer, sexier, more popular, more productive, more envied, and more admired. Be perfect and amazing and crap out 12 karat gold nuggets before breakfast each morning while kissing your selfie-ready spouse and two and a half kids goodbye. Then fly your helicopter to your wonderfully fulfilling job where you spend your days doing incredibly meaningful work that's likely to save the planet one day. Mark Manson Manson starts his book by telling the story of the famous American author Charles Bukowski. Before he became famous, Bukowski was an alcoholic gambler who was frequently rejected by publishers. It was not until Bukowski turned 50 that an editor finally accepted a piece of his work. The public and media described his story as the American dream. But Bukowski knew the reality. He was still a loser. He wasn't a best-selling author. He was fine with this, though. This self-acceptance is what drew so many people to him and his books. Bukowski has the words, don't try, written on his gravestone. This approach is entirely different from modern society's expectations of how we can become happier, richer, healthier, and more successful by merely wanting it. Manson believes this approach means we will feel like we are never enough. Society wants us to care about everything, all the time. Manson suggests we only put effort into the most important and immediate events in our lives. True happiness is caring about only essential matters. Don't Try is summarized by the Backwards Law, which was introduced by the British philosopher Alan Watts. The idea is that the more you pursue feeling better, the less satisfied you become. Constantly pursuing satisfaction will reinforce that you lack it in the first place. Manson rephrases this as, the pursuit of positive experience is itself a negative experience. 
The acceptance of negative experience is itself a positive experience. So, you can create positive experiences through the tolerance of negative experiences. Manson ends the chapter by describing his give a fuck framework. This framework identifies what to sacrifice so you can choose the correct thing to give a fuck about. The give a fuck framework. Here are the three subtleties in the give a fuck framework. Subtlety number one, not giving a fuck doesn't mean being indifferent. It means being comfortable with being different. The lesson to take from this chapter isn't that you should give a fuck about nothing. According to Manson, claiming you don't give a fuck about anything is false. With this example, you would still be giving a fuck about not giving a fuck about anything. So Manson suggests that you instead give a fuck about a few important things, allowing you to care less about the other unimportant things. Here's the second subtlety. Subtlety number two. To not give a fuck about adversity, you must first give a fuck about something more important than adversity. The only reason you might worry about adversity in your life is that you don't have anything better to give a fuck about. For example, if you're always worried about how much money you have, the issue is not how much money you have. Instead, it is simply that you don't have something better to give a fuck about. Subtlety number three. Whether you realize it or not, you are always choosing what to give a fuck about. This is the first occasion that Manson introduces this subtlety, but he dives deep into it in chapter five. Chapter two. Happiness is a problem. Self-help books often focus on the goal of constant happiness. Manson suggests this idea is harmful. As humans, we are naturally slightly unhappy. Manson highlights this point by talking about dukkha, which is a Buddhist principle that claims that life is suffering. Self-help books are merely attempting to change this natural expression of emotions. Doing this achieves nothing. We are supposed to experience unhappiness. It helps us push on and look to achieve genuine success. According to Manson, individuals who are sold a self-help notion of happiness will struggle to counteract their negative emotions, so they will likely find unhealthy habits to deal with these negative emotions. Doing this will only send the individual deeper into the loop of unhappiness. Instead, Manson recommends you accept reality as it is. Take responsibility for your emotions and understand that tackling negative emotions is a daily struggle. Problems never stop, they just change. Manson applies this to the psychological concept called the hedonic treadmill. This is the idea that once we acquire what we believe will make us happy, we just find another problem. So we should be aiming to solve problems in our lives rather than avoid them. We should not be aiming for a life without problems, but a life full of good problems. A more interesting question, a question that most people never consider is, what pain do you want in your life? What are you willing to struggle for? Because that seems to be a greater determinant of how our lives turn out. Mark Manson Chapter 3. You are not special All of this every person can be extraordinary and achieve greatness stuff is basically just jerking off your ego. It's a message that tastes good going down, but in reality is nothing more than empty calories that make you emotionally fat and bloated. The proverbial Big Mac for your heart and your brain. Mark Manson Manson believes that self-help books and modern society are obsessed with the idea that we are all unique. This idea has created a society of entitled people who expect everything to go right for them all the time. Entitlement is feeling as though you deserve to be happy without sacrificing for it. There are two types of entitlement. One, grandiose narcissism, which is like saying, I'm awesome and the rest of you all suck, so I deserve special treatment. Two, victim narcissism, which is like saying, I suck, and the rest of you are all awesome, so I deserve special treatment. Both of these types of narcissism end up the same, as they behave in the same way. Both types are deluded about where they lie in the social hierarchy. They both think everything should be catered to benefit them and are completely self-absorbed. A study from the late 1960s correlated positive self-image with accomplishments in life. Based on this study's findings, policymakers started to use things like participation prizes and unattainable goals to try to motivate children. Manson believes this single study has created a society that does not accept reality. The issue with not accepting reality is that people no longer use their problems as a stepping stone toward their success. For Manson, success is not the product of high self-esteem. Success is the product of a constant need to improve. Chapter 4. 
The Value of Suffering Everything worthwhile in life is won through surmounting the associated negative experience. Any attempt to escape the negative, to avoid it or quash it or silence it, only backfires. The avoidance of suffering is a form of suffering. The avoidance of struggle is a struggle. The denial of failure is a failure. Hiding what is shameful is itself a form of shame. Mark Manson Many Japanese soldiers ended up stranded on many of the Pacific Islands during the Second World War. These soldiers were cut off from the rest of the world, so they did not know that the war had ended. As a result, they continued to fight the war into the 1950s, 60s, and 70s. It did not matter how strong, intelligent, or motivated these soldiers were, they were destined to fail. Manson uses this analogy to highlight that without the correct values and goals leading your actions, you are fucked. The Scientific Method and Happiness Manson believes that life and happiness are related to the scientific method. Your values are hypotheses, your actions are experiments, and the outcomes are data. So, we should make smart decisions based on results rather than fear, doubt, or uncertainty. Uncertainty is a vital rung in the ladder to success, and we should not fear it. Uncertainty is what allows us to learn more. Uncertainty helps us understand our values are imperfect. So it guards us against extremist ideology. It also removes the judgment and stereotyping of other people. Values and happiness. Your deepest emotions are related to your values, and the values you fight for determine who you are. Good values are vital for your happiness, but we often focus on bad values. Chasing empty pleasure and believing that you are always right are examples of bad values. Good values are reality-based, internally achieved, and socially constructive. A great example of a good value is honesty. You can better deal with your daily problems if you adopt good values. As mentioned, one of the most common bad values is pleasure. Many people prioritize pleasure in their lives, but chasing pleasure as a value in your life is unhealthy. Manson explains that drug addicts, adulterers, and gluttons are all motivated by pleasure as a value. Material success is also a widespread bad value. If we use material success as a value, we will always compare ourselves to someone who's richer than us. So we will continue to pursue wealth at whatever cost. To support this point, Manson offers the example of guitarist Dave Mustaine. In 1983, he was kicked out of Metallica just before their big break. Mustaine spent the next two years perfecting his guitar skills. He was then able to start the band Megadeth, which would sell over 25 million records. But this success was not enough. Mustaine continued to compare himself to Metallica, who have sold over 125 million records. This meant he was still unhappy. Manson then compares Mustaine to Pete Best. Best was kicked out of the world-renowned band The Beatles. Watching The Beatles' success did leave Best depressed for a while, but he ended up far happier than Mustaine because he came to a simple realization. Music is more important than success. Mustaine had bad values, while Best had good values. Who you are is defined by what you're willing to struggle for. Mark Manson While bad values are tied to suffering, Manson believes that a certain amount of suffering is unavoidable. This means we should identify a job we enjoy so much that we don't mind the daily moments of suffering that are inevitable. Manson provides an example from his own life of how his passions help him push through daily suffering. Manson enjoyed writing about dating and subsequently started a dating advice blog. He struggled at first and he suffered through hard work and failure. But his enjoyment trumped this suffering. Manson persevered and his blog gained hundreds of thousands of subscribers. He was then able to make it his full-time job. So Manson recommends deciding the things in life that you want to suffer for. We suffer for the simple reason that suffering is biologically useful. It is nature's preferred agent for inspiring change. We have evolved to always live with a certain degree of dissatisfaction and insecurity because it's the mildly dissatisfied and insecure creature that's going to do the most work to innovate and survive. Mark Manson Chapter 5. You are always choosing. There is a simple realization from which all personal improvement and growth emerges. This is the realization that we, individually, are responsible for everything in our lives, 
no matter the external circumstances. We don't always control what happens to us, but we always control how we interpret what happens to us, as well as how we respond. Whether we consciously recognize it or not, we are always responsible for our experiences. It's impossible not to be. Choosing to not consciously interpret events in our lives is still an interpretation of the events of our lives. Mark Manson We cannot always choose what happens in our lives or the outcome of our decisions. But we have complete control over how we choose to respond to a problem or failure emotionally. Taking responsibility for our reactions to negative circumstances will help us better deal with problems in our lives. An individual who can do this is Manson's definition of a successful person. Take responsibility. As an example of the importance of taking responsibility, Manson talks about the American psychologist William James. In 1872, William James' life was falling apart. James was unemployed, he suffered constant back spasms, and his father was ashamed of his son's failures. James considered taking his own life. But late one night, James was reading lectures by the philosopher Charles Pierce. He decided to conduct an experiment. James spent one year taking full responsibility for all the negative things happening in his life. If, after 12 months, his life did not improve, he would take his own life. James' experiment worked, and James called his emphasis on taking responsibility his rebirth. In the years that followed, he became a highly influential psychologist and philosopher. Today, he is recognized as one of the most famous psychologists ever to have lived. The decision to take responsibility for his problems allowed James to direct all his energy to improving his life. He then improved millions of other people's lives. When you take responsibility for a problem, you take responsibility for how that problem makes you feel. Instead of using the Spider-Man quote, with great power comes great responsibility, Mark Manson says, with great responsibility comes great power. Chapter 6. You are wrong about everything, but so am I. Manson encourages us to challenge all our previously held ideas. Doubting ourselves and our actions will help us improve over time consistently. We won't always be right. Manson explains that society's beliefs 500 years ago were fundamentally wrong about several things. For example, people believed the Earth was flat and didn't even know the Western Hemisphere existed. In the same way, you can look back at what you believed 10 or 15 years ago and notice you were also wrong about several things. The lesson to learn from this is that some of the things you hold to be true right now will likely be wrong and even ridiculous in 20 or 30 years' time. Then how can we put this into practice? The answer is that the more often we question our decisions, the less difficult it will be to realize we have made a genuine mistake. If we adopt this approach, we will also change our behaviors more easily based on these self-reflections. Manson's Law of Avoidance Manson creates his own law of behavior here. According to him, the more something threatens your identity, the more you will avoid it. So to reduce this level of avoidance, we have to reduce our sense of identity and ego. We must identify ourselves as loosely and ambiguously as possible. To help you start identifying yourself more loosely, you should start asking yourself these three questions. 1. What if I'm wrong? 2. What would it mean if I were wrong? 3. Would being wrong create a better or worse problem than my current problem for both myself and others? Chapter 7. Failure is the way forward. This is the most simple and basic component of life. Our struggles determine our successes. Mark Manson. Manson believes that failure is a hugely important part of life. Becoming an expert in anything requires thousands of failures. These failures are what help you to fine-tune your approach through continuous improvement. This is why fear of failure leads to stagnation. Instead of worrying when we fail, we should try again. People often view failure as a sign they should stop doing something. Manson challenges this view and suggests it should be a sign to keep trying. This means we must learn to persevere through the pain of failure. One of the most common events that leads to positive change is an unlikely one. Personal Tragedies These tragedies help us to look at our lives, values, and outlooks objectively. We can then decide from there how we can make changes for the better. The Do Something Principle Manson's high school math teacher introduced this principle to him. This teacher always taught his students to rewrite the problem if they didn't know the answer. Rewriting the problem allows your mind to find the next step. 
Manson has since applied this principle to everything in his life. If you are stuck, then just do something, and you will often surprise yourself. Instead of motivation leading to action, the do something principle argues that action leads to motivation. Chapter 8. The Importance of Saying No You and everyone you know are going to be dead soon, and in the short amount of time between here and there, you have a limited amount of fucks to give. Very few, in fact. And if you go around giving a fuck about everything and everyone without conscious thought or choice, well, then you're going to get fucked. Mark Manson To truly stand for one thing, you must first reject another issue. Being open toward everything thrown at you will only mean you spread yourself too thin. It is more joyful choosing one pursuit and consistently committing to bettering yourself. Manson explains you also cannot truly enjoy something if you don't reject the alternatives. Manson also talks about romantic relationships here. Romantic love can be either unhealthy or healthy. Unhealthy love happens when each partner uses the relationship to run away from their problems. Unfortunately, no one can mask personal problems forever, and so this avoidance as passion inevitably turns sour. On the opposite end, healthy love exists when both partners are wholly invested in the relationship. Rather than using it as a distraction, they are devoted. That said, this desire must be reciprocated. If one partner seeks to dominate the other, this is clear evidence of unhealthy love. Chapter 9. And then, you die. Yet, in a bizarre backwards way, death is the light by which the shadow of all of life's meaning is measured. Without death, everything would feel inconsequential, all experience arbitrary, all metrics and values suddenly zero. Mark Manson Manson describes it as amazing that we all face death daily and still choose to fight on. As humans, we naturally fear death and make decisions around this fear. We wish to be remembered for eternity, though we know our physical bodies will die. We are continually striving toward leaving an immortal, lasting memory of ourselves. It is only when we confront death that we can fully understand what we should be giving a fuck about. Final Summary The subtle art of not giving a fuck challenges the self-help industry whose books argue that we should be constantly searching for more happiness and success. Manson points out that this approach will leave you even less satisfied, as you notice all that you lack. So instead of giving a fuck about everything, you have to choose what to give a fuck about. The three subtleties that describe the art of not giving a fuck are, not giving a fuck does not mean being indifferent. It means being comfortable being different. To not give a fuck about adversity, you must first give a fuck about something more important than adversity. And finally, whether you realize it or not, you are always choosing what to give a fuck about. Did you like this audiobook summary? Click the like button now to support our channel. If you don't want to miss out on new free audiobook summaries, subscribe and click the bell button. You can also download our free app and enjoy thousands of other summaries of best-selling nonfiction books that are available in text, audio, and animated formats. Story Shots has been featured by Apple, Google, and The Guardian as one of the world's best reading and learning apps. Go to GetStoryShots.com and download the app today.